Taking a little dookie. Hello and welcome to the beginner's course on how to make a custom rig in Dreams. This is the launch to a multi-part series that aims to help you become a better character creator. We're going to be going over the basic steps you need to make rigging easy. With that said, let's begin with our first step. The three C's of rigging. Center, characters, crotches. You may be asking, but Pac, why does it need to be centered? Well, dear viewer, it doesn't need to be, as Media Molecule has shown us. But I, for one, am a strong believer in that it should be centered. I'm over here putting my fist on the table. If you're still not giving into my whole centering propaganda, here's a few benefits as a result of having your character centered. It prevents a weird jitter thing that happens when you're trying to animate with the puppet mirror on. Also, it helps when you're trying to implement logic that deals with precise movement and positioning. And lastly, mirroring limbs is just a lot easier when you have a character sculpt that is actually centered. To center your sculpt, it's best to have your character be the only thing that's in the scene or a group. That way, you can just double tap on X to select all sculpts that make up your character. Otherwise, go through and select everything that makes up your character. With your character now selected, turn on the grid, hold R2 and tap triangle to snap all selected objects to the grid. And if you're lucky, that should be it. But sometimes your sculpt could actually be sculpted off center. To fix that, you're going to have to either sculpt again or try your luck with this teleporter trick that I have to get a rough center, and I mean rough. To perform this trick, go ahead and turn on the grid again and place a tag anywhere on the grid. It just has to be on grid. Next, go ahead and place a teleporter on the sculpt you're trying to center. Opening the tweak menu kind of reveals what's gonna happen here. There's a little point there in the middle of the sculpt's mass. So teleporters have this cool thing, I don't know why, but they have uh, the ability to kind of center on the mass of a sculpt. Now with a nice consensual click of R3, we put our scene into play mode. And when it goes into play mode, it snaps to that tag. Pause your scene with the same consensual click, and then move your sculpt up and down, and then delete the tag and teleporter. Hopefully you have something that's a little more centered. If your sculpt is still at like a weird angle, you can try and use the precise move on the tag's position to try and like, you know, rotate it into the right position there. But uh, honestly, if, if you're at this point and your sculpt is still not centered, you're either gonna have to live with it or sculpt again. You can check if your sculpt is ready for the next step and is centered by clicking in the left stick with the grid on to flip your character sculpts on the vertical axis. If your sculpt looks unchanged or, you know, just looks the same, then you are perfect. You are perfectly centered. You are ready for the next step. Anyways, no more boring grid talk. Uh, let's get on to step two. Step two, separation of limbs. This is a pretty quick step. All you're doing is ensuring all pivot points on your character are separate sculpts. Just like the games of old, each separate piece of your character needs to be its own individual sculpt. You can refer to the Dreams Puppet for all the separate limbs you'll need to make it work with all the built-in logic. These separate pieces can be found on the fourth page of the Puppet Logic. The sculpts you'll be needing are... Crotch Abs Chesticles Neck Cranium Shoulder Arm Mittens Thigh knees, cankles, and toes. Otherwise known as Kakaniskansam Ticket. And lastly, if you happen to be one of those sculptors that like to sculpt both arms at once, be sure to use the cutout tool and separate those limbs as the good lord intended. And just like that, we're on to step three. Step three the quick three C's of rigging. Not to be confused with the three C's of rigging. The quick three C's are collisions, cube, and cube again. 
All collisions on your puppet should be completely turned off. If you look at the standard puppet, it has a pill hitbox, so your sculpts don't need any collisions. Also, having collisions on tend to make your puppet explode. Just like when centering, double tap X to select everything. With everything now selected, go ahead and open the tweak menu on any of the sculpts. Go to the fifth page where your physical attributes are and you can see collisions is highlighted. I tend to double tap the collisions options just to ensure everything is off. While you're at it, might as well turn off movable as well because when you put down your joints, your joints will make any necessary sculpts movable, so you don't need to have movability on. Also, having your sculpts not move now makes it so when we group them, they are going to be movable as a group rather than move individually within the group. Uh, this will become more clear in the next step. Now let's double check that nothing is collidable. Place down a cube above your character that is collidable and movable. Press play on your scene and if your cube passes through your character with no issues, successful collidable offness. If you didn't experience successful collidable offness, pause your scene when your cube collides with a sculpt to help locate where the sculpt with collision is and turn off the collision. With that done, go ahead and place down a cube about the height of your shoulder, and then another cube down by the waist. You can place the cubes either to the left or the right of the character, I just tend to put it to the right. And the quick C's aren't called quick for nothing, they are now on to step 4. Step 4, blocking out limbs. Like step 2, refer to the Dreams Puppet or Kaken Ninkansam Ticket for all the separate limbs you'll need. This time we're grouping any multi-part limb together. Since Dipper has a sleeve and arm piece that make up the upper arm, I'm going to group these together. All sculpts that make up your head, shoulders, knees, or toes need to be in their own separate groups. My arm and legs are mirrors of each other, I can go ahead and delete half of my limbs to speed up the process. Just go through and ensure anything that needs to be grouped is grouped, and we can move on to step 5. Step 5, Joints and Box Method. Now, with everything centered, pieced out, non-collidable, and not movable, we can finally put down our first connector. Like real people, everything comes from the crotch, so that's where I tend to begin. With the grid on to ensure your puppet's core connectors are centered, Connect the waist to the abdominal area, to the chest, to the neck, to the head. The yellow sphere indicates your joint's anchor, so if your waist has a blue sphere inside of it, select the joint and flip its parenting. Adjust your joint's rotation points using the precise move tool to keep your limbs centered. Take your time with the rotation points and make sure you're happy with them before you move on to the next joint and test as you go. For the arms, I'm going to be branching out from the cube I placed at shoulder height on step 4 and working my way down the arm. I think this goes without saying, but you don't need the grid or precise move for the arms or legs. Turn the connector at the elbow into a bolt to lock its rotation to one axis, and rotate that axis to the correct position. If your character is in the almighty T pose, the grid is a good friend here. You can also add limits to prevent your joints from bending backwards. Same thing with the legs, but this time branching out from the waist cube. Connect the limbs together, turn the knee connector into a bolt, prevent flamingo leg from happening, and now onto giving our character its limbs back. Clone the cubes and limbs and flip them. This saves us the trouble of having to rig the left side. Merge the cubes to their body counterparts by selecting both the cubes and the chest and grouping them. Now get rid of the unnecessary cube sculpts by going into the chest group and deleting the cubes from the group. Dreams is smart enough to assign your joint to the new chest group, making your arms now attached to your chest. Repeat the process again with the legs. Clone and flip, select and group, scope and delete. Double tap X on your character's crotch one last time just to check if everything's ready. Move your character around with R2, and if nothing gets left behind, you are ready. Another check is to press play on your scene, and you should see your character fall like a marionette puppet. If your checks are good, this means you've followed along correctly so far, so now we're on to the final step. Step 6. Bait and Switch. 
bring out a standard puppet from dreams and stamp it down on grid. With a double tap of X on your newly rigged character, select all of your character and group it within the puppet by moving it with a hold of R2, a hold of L1, and tapping X. Double check everything is within the puppet group, where you see the purple disc thing. A good way to know if all your sculpts made the transfer is to turn on the hide everything else button down here. You need to make sure everything is within the puppet group, otherwise your limbs are going to influence your puppet's movements. Delete the stamped puppet, put your puppet where you'd like it to be, and then open the puppet menu. And take a drink anytime I say puppet. In the puppet's tweak menu, open up the baddie structure page. On this baddie structure page, begin assigning your puppet's structure nodes to its related baddie parts. A successful assignment is shown by the bone becoming white. When you're done assigning your limbs, you successfully made your own rig and puppet. And that brings our little rigging adventure to an end. Thank you all for watching, hope this has helped you, and until next time.